Welcome here to Medley in Dublin. It's in the heart of the city centre. The building where I'm sitting at the moment used to house the printing press for the Irish Times. Now we do food, we have weddings, we have corporate events, private parties. So this series is all about food. I'm going to be running through some really wonderful, tasty, very simple recipes that we would have had at home growing up as kids. Back in the 70s, my recollection of Christmas is wrapping presents on Christmas Eve, getting ready for Santa Claus, but it was also about prepping food. I really hope you enjoy it, and I know I will as well. Welcome back to the Medley Kitchen. So this is the piece de la resistance. This is the end game. This is the champion. This is Christmas dinner. So we've got a lot of sides. We're gonna be doing a cranberry sauce, but we're not actually gonna be doing it. I'm gonna show you the ingredients and I'll give you the recipe afterwards. Uh, we've got um, a lovely um, Brussels sprout and courgette mix. We've got baked ham, we've got caramelized carrots. Uh, we've got Yorkshire puddings. I'm gonna be making a baste for the turkey crown. So the turkey crown is what we want. So Camilla's just come in with the turkey crown. Thank you very much, Camilla, for the turkey crown. <laughs> we kind of knew, I actually went out to the shops earlier, we couldn't find any turkey crowns because we're now still two weeks before Christmas. So we found a duck. So the duck is gonna work just as well. So we can use exactly the same array of ingredients, exactly the same recipe, but I'm gonna be preparing the duck. Thank you, Camilla, that is absolutely brilliant. So what I'm gonna do here, first and foremost, um, I'm gonna make the little glaze for the duck, as opposed to the turkey crown. But if you prefer to use a turkey crown, you can, and you can use exactly the same ingredients. So in here, what I have, um, I've got some uh, garlic, I've got some fresh thyme, I've got some fresh rosemary. Now the thing with thyme and rosemary, is to make sure that you take the stalks off. There's nothing works and worse than having these woody stalks inside in the marinade. And also if you're preparing anything, if you're doing anything, for example, like a beef bourguignon, for instance. I've been into restaurants with a beef bourguignon, they use this for a marinade, then they cook it, and then you have these woody um, stems. You don't want that. So again, a little bit of more thyme, a little bit of more rosemary, a bit of salt, a bit of pepper, and in the meantime, what I'm doing is I'm heating up a saucepan or a frying pan here, and I'm going to be making um, the components for the Brussels sprout and bacon um, dish. So I'm going to put a little bit of sugar in here, and this will be for the glaze. I've got some honey straight in there with our not-so-runny honey. That actually does rhyme, not-so-runny honey. So in there with the honey. Ooh, that's a really good quality honey. And do you know what the thing is? First lockdown, I moved down to Rossler and I lived with my friend Aiden, and I got really bad hay fever for the first time in my life. So somebody locally said to me, the best thing if you have hay fever is to use local honey, local pollen, local bees, and that should calm it, and it did. It worked absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in there as well, and I'm gonna mix this up. So this is gonna be the glaze. I want to basically loosen it a little bit more, and I'm gonna finish it off with a little bit of orange juice as well. So I'm gonna mix this in. Make sure you get all those ingredients well combined. Oh, lovely smells. And I'm gonna glaze the top of the duck with all of these ingredients. Now what the honey's gonna do, it's gonna caramelize the outer skin as well, and that will melt straight into it. Now, to finish that off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna garnish that with some segments of orange. So just very lightly, and I'm gonna use cloves to pin that into the skin. So there we go. And I can feel that pressing into the outer skin of the duck, okay? And the cloves add another element of flavor. It's absolutely to die for. This is gonna go into a preheated oven, 200 degrees for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, doesn't really matter. Reduce it down to 180, fan assisted, and I'm gonna leave it in for approximately an hour and a half. So here we go. This is our duck, and that's gonna go straight into the oven, and we'll come back to that an hour and a half, but in the meantime, I'm gonna get on with my other bits and pieces. So straight into the oven. Excellent, that's up to temperature. So back here to the main center of, epicenter of the world, which is the kitchen. So I'm gonna get some butter, um, I'm going to heat that up. Now, this is beautiful because we're gonna be serving this 
with the duck and if you prefer you could have your turkey crown or you could have a full turkey on the bone but this is a lovely mix Brussels sprouts I love Brussels sprouts and the thing with Brussels sprouts is they don't want to be overcooked there's nothing wrong with Brussels sprouts that have been cooking for two hours in water and they turn into mulch these need to be, these need to be al dente they need to be crispy but more importantly, that color, you need to retain the color. You want that lovely, vibrant green color. So this is heating up nicely. The great thing about induction is I can go from no heat to high heat really, really quickly. So in here, we have our bacon. So the thing with cooking is to be prepared and to have all of your ingredients ready to go. Even when I'm doing my shopping, what I'll do is I'll get an A4 piece of paper, I'll go, uh, I'll put a list together, I'll go uh, meat, fruit, veg, dairy, other, and I'll list and itemize all the elements that I need for all of the different dishes, which means when you go into the supermarket, you know which aisles to run down and you can do your cooking really quickly. And then what you do is before you cook, get all your different ingredients together and you have them all there. So you're not scratching your head, walking away, wondering, oh gosh, what's next? And then you overcook one side or one element and you undercook something else. Everything needs to be performed with military precision. And particularly on Christmas Day, we as a family, there were nine children, mum and dad. You could just imagine um, the amount of work that needed to be done, but everything was done in advance. So when I go down to, to mum and dad's this Christmas Eve, I know that my sister Sophie will have done the Brussels sprouts. Mum's job is the turkey. Somebody else does the roast potatoes and everything is done the day before. But the biggest trick was to do the ham the day before as well. Slice it when it's cool into the oven and it warms up really quickly and you can pour some more glaze over the top. So again, prep, prep, prep everything in advance. So we've got our bacon in there. We've got our cranberries. Now these aren't the exact ingredients for the recipe. This is just to show you at home what is gonna go into this because I have everything already prepared. So these are the courgettes and these are the Brussels sprouts which have already been blanched. Again, I've got that up at really high heat. I've got a little bit of orange juice in there just to introduce a little bit of sweetness. A little bit of pepper. There we go. And a little bit of salt. Now, that's on a really high heat. I'm gonna bring it up to top heat here now, so that's gonna start bubbling away. The rashers are slightly underdone, but I'm just gonna taste the juice here just to make sure Oh, that we have the flavor components right. Again, that is perfect. So you're gonna cook that off for about three minutes and then we're gonna serve up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that off the heat just now. I'm gonna move this over here. I'm gonna get rid of some of these so that we can actually plate up and I'm gonna bring the duck back onto <coughs> our heat pad and I'm gonna let that cool down. So for this particular job, out comes the duck, which has been cooking for one and a half hours. So I had one prepared already in the oven. I'm gonna let that set, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear the desk here, and I'm gonna come back to you in about five minutes, and we're gonna serve up. And here we have it, the most wonderful presentation of, you know, a Christmas dinner. We've got our beautiful duck, which obviously can be replaced with a, with a turkey, either on the bone or as a turkey crown. Turkey crowns are wonderful, but the flavor of this duck is just really intense, it's beautiful. We have our Brussels sprouts with our cranberries and our bacon and our segments of orange. We've got an added extra here. We've got back bacon. And this was what I was saying a little bit earlier that what my mum used to do is she used to pre-cook this and then when it's cooled down, cut it into slices and then into the fridge. And the following day on Christmas day, what you'll do is you'll pour a little bit of glaze over it, wrap it in tin foil into the oven, 160 degrees, 35, 40 minutes, and it's beautifully um, succulent. Got lovely Yorkshire puddings, We've got lovely um, roast potatoes with rosemary. We've also got um, a really fabulous cranberry sauce, homemade cranberry sauce, which are fresh cranberries, ginger, cloves, cinnamon. Uh, we've got um, ginger and ground cinnamon and star anise. We've got sugar. And it's just all of these different flavor combinations work really, really well together. But the real star of the show here is our duck with our wonderful oranges, we've got our cloves, we've got our glaze, which is the rosemary and the garlic and the thyme and the honey and the olive oil. It only took one hour, 20 minutes. It depends on the size of the, of the, of the, of the duck, but make sure that you do keep the weight so that you can work out what the cooking time and the cooking temperature will be. 
And in the meantime, enjoy and have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas.